All right, we'll start with uh, name, title, and what team you're with. Basil Harfouche, owner, player with the Tampa Bay Titans. Tampa Bay. Okay. Uh, so to start off, um, obviously these teams are in all different types of communities, different ones, bigger cities sometimes. we got some Dallas-Fort Worth area. But uh, Tampa Bay is one of them where you have – a lot of different teams in Tampa. You, is there professional basketball in Tampa? No, no I'm we're blanking. The, uh, we're, the, we're the first pro Orlando. team. Orlando. Orlando okay. and then Miami. Oh, boy, that one slipped. Okay, but you do have we, – we have baseball and we have football. And you have hockey. And, and hockey. I knew that too. The number one hockey Lightning. team actually I knew that. in the nation. Okay. Yeah, football not so much right now, but <laughs> – <laughs> Yes. Okay, so the first professional basketball team there. Do you see that as a good thing that you're in this big market and now you're filling a niche for basketball? Yes. That's the main reason I took it over. I saw that there was a uh, there's a market for it, not just for players, but there's a need from the fans in the community. That why do we got to drive two hours to go watch Orlando play? Why not just go down the street and be able to watch a professional basketball game in a brand new league that's expanding nationwide? What year is this for Tampa Bay? This is the second year. Second year. How did year one go? Year one went well. Uh, not the outcome we wanted. Obviously, we wanted to get a championship. Didn't make it that far. But as far as the organization and myself putting something together was brand new, successful all the way around. How did you experience as far as um, fandom, people coming in? Was you know what did it look like on a day to day for a home game? It went well. I mean, our first game we had almost six, seven hundred people, but okay. average around four hundred people a game. It was good. It was exciting. And people supported are, us. Are these? Do you think? Would you consider these consistent people, or are you bringing in new people every time? I would say consistent, depending on who's coming in. Sometimes you see some new faces, or some people didn't make the first couple of games, but after they came to one or two, you'd see them basically throughout the whole season. Okay, so you player owner, yes. right? Uh, how do you um, look at a team in the TBL and see it as something different than what already exists for basketball? Well, when I look at another team, the first thing I think is we're going to kill them. <laughs> On the court, that is, yes. Uh, I'm excited because the, the biggest thing for me, being a player and been through all of this, that all these teams are providing a platform for athletes nationwide. So instead of flying across the borders, going over the waters, you can come home and play. You don't have to leave your family. You don't have to leave your kids. So all these teams coming in, the league keeps growing, new markets. It's a good thing for this area. Now, we would argue, or many would argue, that there already is a platform. There's the ABA. Yeah, but ABA is considered semi-pro. Okay. Yeah, this is a professional league. They pay. Everything's on time. Flights, hotels, everything's taken care of by the by the team owners. Uh, how? I mean, it seems obvious, but if you can kind of detail it more, how important is it that you have a league that doesn't have black marks on its record for, for missing payments, which a lot of listeners don't realize is a huge problem in many other areas? Um, just expand a little bit on why it's so important that that's a focus. In my opinion, that's important because that makes you a professional league. You can't be a professional if you're late, if you're not paying players. You know, if, if you're getting this, this stigma around the nation or around your community that, hey, Tampa Bay Titans don't pay on time, why would people want to come and watch or support something that we're not true to? You know, even players are like, well, they want to come to my market because Basil's on time with everything. The Titans don't mess up. They, don't, they do everything they say they're going to do. And that, that's what really takes your league and your team to another level, especially being professional across the board. And um, switching gears here, we would like to ask how that they how a team would focus to bring in fans or bring in attention. Um, do you see it being a little easier? Now you said you chose this one because of it. Do you see it being a little easier because you're in a big city without professional basketball? So my first year, that's what I intended. Now again, we're a smaller league, we're a minor league, yeah. so we're not coming in with millions of dollars of marketing and advertisement. So we were at a venue which wasn't in, it was in Tampa, but competing with your NHL, your NFL, your MLB and the nightlife and going out, it was it tough. Yeah, it was. So now we got a brand new venue still in Tampa Bay region, but in an area where there's not a lot of entertainment, a lot of sports going on. So now we're the main focus. So we were at a university, a state college who have a very good name in that area, in that county. And the, the, the community has been supporting us all the way, especially when you tie yourself to a good organization as a university we're at. People be like, since they're supporting them, we're going to support these guys. Do you see any sort of connection as far as like um, players looking at you like, hey, I don't know what comes next, but I know that there's a minor league team here in Tampa Bay. I mean, does that draw in eyes from players being connected with the university in that area? Oh, yeah. So now I think now certain players will want to go to this university because, hey, the Tampa Bay Titans are here now. So if I'm playing for this school or I'm playing against this school, you never know if one of the staff or the owners are at a game 
and they can potentially see me to get a professional job once my career is over. Has that ever been expressed from the university? They, uh, not from the university. Sure. But people, you know, they, they're like, that's, that's pretty good for the university. Brings good publicity to the area as well. Is there any sort of competition as far? Because, I mean, leagues are similar in time frame. Um, is there any sort of competition? Not that I had a problem with last year, and especially now since we're starting in February, our first home game is like after Super Bowl. Yeah. So the weekend is, is for us. NBA, like I said, in our area, I mean, you're either going to turn on the TV, you're going to drive two and a half, three hours in traffic to catch an Orlando game. So you want a professional sport, basketball, drive down the street and watch us play. How do you look at um, the TBL being kind of a platform and ready for players to go? I mean, that's kind of the goal. Do you look at it as a necessary evil that they're probably going to leave or a good thing that they're able to move on? I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Now, it does, for like for, for me, for instance, I had 12 guys were bringing six guys back to training camp. We had two guys go overseas, and that's huge for them. I mean, that's, my, that's one of my main goals. I put this together in Tampa to be able to provide a platform for you to Take a step here and move forward. Now, as far as chemistry and team, you build something, you lose three, four guys. Yeah, it's not great, but the overall goal is to provide a platform for athletes to continue to play basketball, build a resume, and get to the highest level. Um, one thing that's a little bit different about the TBL is that there are almost nobody, I would just, the vast majority have no agents coming into this whole thing. They go to combines and that's how they get in. Um, but now there's a process where they're building where an agency is going to be tied with the basketball league to help them move forward. Right. How has that filled in um, an otherwise muddy situation for players trying to figure out where to go after college? I think it's huge. I think what, what David Magley and the, the TBL are doing with providing all the players just an agency from within the league because, you know, people can't get jobs without agents. It's, it's hard. It's harder. Not, I'm sorry. Yeah. You can get jobs. It's just harder. But a lot of agents will post stuff. And a lot of players go to Facebook now and those social media platforms to find an agent. And they'll tell them, hey, pay me up front or we got this job. And you fly out and end up not being anything. So the fact that he's providing something from within the league, you know it's legitimate. These agents are being able to move players around and helping players. And it also brings more eyes and viewers to the TBL because now agents across the world are talking about, hey, there's guys in the TBL. Well, what's the TBL? It's a, it's a pro league in the U.S. So now when you're done playing here, you can go somewhere and say, I played in the TBL, mm -hmm. and there's, it's a, it, there's a strong backing to it. It's not like some league we didn't hear about. Uh, and then finally, when one of the really important parts, especially when you're looking at minor league sports in any capacity, is uh, longevity, making sure that you're going to be there for the long time. So starting off, how are you confident that – Tampa will be able to keep their team long term what you know what if you, you put in place what makes you a little bit different that people can say yeah I'm, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul I'm gonna I want to follow them and I know they're gonna be here I can't speak for others but for myself being the owner uh, we're gonna be here for the long haul um, I don't get involved with something I don't go 110 percent in my passion has always been basketball and I will continue to push this team I mean god forbid something happens but until the end and as I continue to partner with people in the community, make the right partnerships, talk to the right people, and show good face, we shouldn't have a problem moving forward at all. So you picked Tampa because, you know, you said it was... I was born there. I was okay. raised in L.A., but my last 10 years I've been in Tampa. So Tampa's okay. home. Okay. And, um, but there must have been a reason why you wanted to work with the, the basketball league. What did you see in it that made you think this is the right call? Well, the basketball, I played in the, the, the TBL when it was the NAPB yeah. the first year. And I've, I've known Magny for some time, and I know he's always been a stand-up guy. He's always been true to his word, and he's always worked hard. And when he provided the opportunity to me, I was like, this, this is going to be a good fit. So then I thought, okay, Tampa's my home. I don't like – because I played overseas for three years, and I didn't like being away from my family for six, seven months at a time. And then I was like, well, Tampa doesn't have a basketball team. So it just all clicked together. And then that's when I bought in and never looked back. Is there anything we need to know about the TBL or Tampa that we haven't covered? Well, we are uh, we're excited. We are. This is, a, like I said, new venue. Season starts in February. If anyone's in Tampa Bay, please contact me. And the TBL is growing. So get in now before you miss out. <laughs> awesome. All right. That's all. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. Where do we find you? So, oh, uh, our Instagram is the Tampa Bay Titans. Facebook is the Tampa Bay Titans. And we're on Twitter as the Tampa Bay Titans as well. Awesome. All social media platforms.